This is Endurance Nation. Welcome to another episode of the Endurance Nation podcast. I want to call out a new segment we're focusing on this season, the Masters Athlete, or as I like to call them, the most interesting athletes on the team, the people who are interested in taking all of their lessons learned, all of their experiences, and applying them to new places, finding new challenges, exploring new limits to their fitness. Many people think of aging as a narrowing of opportunities, but inside Endurance Station, we see it as an opportunity for exploration using the functional strength, the internal resilience, the lessons learned over decades to go out and try new things, to try new experiences, and to challenge ourselves in unlimited ways. If you're interested in this journey, come join Endurance Station. Apply. We're a team of over 600 athletes, many of whom fit that master's category. It's an opportunity for you to take advantage of our master's-specific training programs, our knowledge and experience inside the team to network with athletes just like you who are walking that same path and unlock your personal potential. Go over to endurancenation.us right now and you can find the join button. Go ahead, click it, apply, and we look forward to seeing you on the inside. Hey, hey, Coach Patrick here, Endurance Nation, back with the third part. Installment three, part three of our Faster Masters series. Today's episode is called The Complete Compete. One of the biggest complaints I hear from master's athletes when they come to us is they say, man, I just don't have those performances anymore. I just don't have the juice. I used to be able to go out and hit these races, do these sprints, do these long distances. I could mix things up. Um, I could pick and choose whatever I wanted. It wasn't really a question of, you know, what should I choose? It was just more how much would I choose? And this second phase of our endurance life brings with it some constraints related to age, related to ability to recovery, all those things that I've talked about in the previous two episodes. And the big piece that I want to sort of demystify for all of you right now is that concept of having to give things up, having to walk away. Like, do we have to make choices? Yes. Can you can you still compete? Yes. However, there are caveats to that. There are small little pieces that you need to be aware of as a master's athlete that are going to allow you to be successful in a way that is consistent with your goals, um, consistent with your experience, um, and commensurate with your desires. But it's not a winner-take-all kind of mentality in terms of our training. If you want to win on the day, however you define winning, whether that's a place in your age group or um, you know just a special time on the clock or simply not getting any slower than you were last year, whatever those goals may be for you, we have to be really focused in on it. And that's why we call this episode the complete compete, right? So here's the issue. As a master's athlete, the drive is there. You're still excited. You're still fit. Uh, relative to your peers, you look at your peers and you say, I'm that old. Like, how's it possible that I'm that old? Look at these other people. I'm doing great. Like, things are great. However, we still internally pretty self critical as athletes and say, mm, I know what my fastest time was, and I know that I'm nowhere near that fastest time. I know what my race weight is, and I know I'm nowhere near my race weight right now, right? Preach. Tell me all about it. So I get it. So, how do we remain competitive? How do we do things? Well, performance is possible. And I want you to just keep that in the back of your mind. The issue is we need some guidelines. We have to take our ego to put that ego in check because ego right now is not our friend. We need, we need selective ego. We need selective ego at the end of the race, right? When everyone else is slowing down, we need ego when motivation is low, but we don't need ego all the time, right? We can't afford to be greedy. We have to be super duper selective. The way that we do this is by focusing in our competition, defining what our goals are really clearly. So we understand what they are. And then using those clear goals with our experience sort of as a filter to get to a place where we understand the workload that we can follow that'll allow us to achieve those goals. So it's less, what's the total amount of work I need to do or what the optimal scenario of training is. It's more, what can I handle? What's the workload that I can do? Here's my goals. What's the work that I can do? Let's reconcile this and then let's get to work. In the past, you could just go out and say, I want to run sub three hours, even though you only just ran four and crush yourself to try and get there regardless of whether or not you made it there, you could go through the motions of doing the work. You'd survive it. Now, at this, in the master's mindset, it's not about surviving. It's about thriving. And we thrive by making better choices, by sustaining those better choices over time, by rewarding better choices with more consistent activity levels, and then ultimately being able to you know, use that fitness and that experience on race day to achieve the desired results, whatever those may be for you. Okay, so the key mental moment here in this episode is that part with the ego, which is overcoming the ego and accepting where you are. 
right? And so there's an ego version of you as an endurance athlete. Uh, this is a picture of me with medals. These are my results. I can see all these things online, et cetera. Probably a lot of the stories that people would say about you. My, you know, sister-in-law does this and my uncle does this. And my dad does this, like whatever those things, those things that people say about you. And then we have sort of that internal monologue, which you know is, I know that I am not that person. Like that person is a superhero version of me relative to where I am now. Not that I can't still be a superhero, but that version, that sort of external version, the one my ego is attached to is not where I am right now. And in the past, sometimes that was just an easy switch. Like, you know what? I'm going to go back into superhero mode versus normal mode. Now, as masters, we can choose to be superhero-ish. We can do superhero things. Got to flip that car off of those nuns or something like that. In the case of emergency, still can do. But can't do it on a daily basis. Can't do it for show um, and have to be really smart. So we have to take that ego version of ourselves and really check it down. Own it. You did it. You did those amazing things. And you are, in fact, indeed amazing. You're just not that same version of yourself now. You can be another version of yourself that's just as amazing in other capacities, but it can't be that same ego-driven version, right? So um, capture it, celebrate it, endorse it, have those posters up, you know, like your super book, super comic book heroes of the past, but that's not who you are now. So you just have to understand that where we are now relative to who we were in the past or who our ego wants us to be. So how do we get there on race day? How do we get to be fast again? We have three specific protocols that we follow with our athletes, not just all year, but specifically in the 12 weeks to race, what's known inside endurance nation as our race prep period. Number one, we emphasize three key things. We emphasize rest, strength, and mobility. What that means is we have dedicated days in all of our training plans where there's actual built-in rest periods. You get to choose optional workouts on those days. Do you want to do some functional strength? Do you want to some, do some mobility, flexibility, yoga, whatever your choice may be, whether you have a class or you have an app or whatever you follow. Keeping up those core functional movements is really critical. As we age, we lose range of motion. Losing range of motion can compromise our ability to function at a high level. Um, and it's very simple in terms of the work you do. If you've ever gone to the physical therapist as a master athlete, guaranteed you've been there. <laughs> when you go there, they don't have you doing crazy work with a leg sled and 6,000 pounds. They've got you doing simple work with a band or balance work or single leg work or preceptive work. All of that's very easy to do at home. You have to make sure you're doing the right form, but otherwise easy to do at home. Don't need a ton of equipment to do it, right? Yoga mats and bands, maybe, maybe a kettlebell. You should be pretty good to go. You can do that easy work. So keep that built into your program because keeping those skills up, the balance, the muscle activation, um, the the progression of muscles as they're meant to fire is what's going to help keep you healthy outside of your everyday training, right? The second part here we have is that we really focus on specifics in terms of our training adaptations for master's athletes. We can't, we can no longer do, let's get better at threshold work. Let's get better at VO2 work and let's get better at volume, right? In the past, when you were younger, we could say, we'll do all of them this year. Let's just check all the boxes. I do all of them. Yes, right? We can't do that anymore. Now we have to choose. Are we going to focus on the intensity side of the equation and get stronger and let the endurance follow our fast before far mantra? Are we going to really focus on the endurance side and say, this year I've got big aspirational goals. I want to do lots of endurance work. And as a result, I'm not going to do a ton of that high intensity. I'm going to spend my time building this consistent engine, uh, staying durable and healthy over the course of this period of time. Whatever those pieces are, we have to choose selectively and we dial ourselves in accordingly, regardless of whichever sport you choose, even if it is a single sport and not a multi-sport situation, we are going to recommend cross-training just for the variety and for overall health and wellness, right? And then last but not least, we tailor your workouts to make sure that you've got some considerations in place to allow you to rest. So even when you have those longer sessions, you already have a built-in rest day, you might need an easy day in between. You might need like uh, 24 hours between key workouts or 48 hours or 72 hours. Whatever those different elements may be, we work those in so that we adapt the training plan to you. And this is something that we charge you with as well. But as your coaches, we also guide you through that. The idea being that it's not so much how much work we can do, but more so how much work can we functionally absorb and then continue training, which becomes the key differentiator for you. So the harder you want to go, the bigger you want to go, the more rest you have to take, right? So you can still go big, you can still go hard, but you have to also match that with similar rest periods. Again, ego comes back and says, no way, no way, do it again. Let's do yesterday again. Yesterday was fun. Do it again today. It's not going to work out well for you as a master's athlete. So our approach is really based on our observations, working for 20 years with endurance athletes here inside the team. Um, and the biggest thing that we have for endurance athletes that was the most important part of our coaching protocol is the flexibility. So we map out your season all the way through your races. So if you signed up today in March, you'd have your season mapped out through December. That gives you incredible flexibility and the ability to plan and move blocks of your training around in order to stay on top of where you need to be. So it's less about, hey, what do I do today? 
and then tomorrow, hey, what do I do today? But more so, what am I doing today that leads to tomorrow, that I connect these dots? We come in and take a look at your month, and we say more of this, less of that, give you some guidance, make sure you're on track with our resources, our guidance in terms of you know preparing for your race or the specifics of your plan or whatever you're focusing on right now in terms of your protocols. And those allow you to get smarter as you get stronger. There's a definite correlation between intelligence and speed inside a neurostation as we get older we're counting on that intelligence not just not just new learned knowledge that comes from our resources and from your teammates but also the experience that you bring to the table from your self-knowledge right from all the races that you've done your past performance is in fact the best predictor of future performance and we count on that in making sure that you're going to be able to be the best on race day because there's things that i won't see that you will have seen yourself you have, you know, you got this tricky calf, right? You know about this problem running downhills. You know about the difficulty staying in aero bars. You know about the problem digesting, you know, high fructose foods after four hours. You get more and more sensitive to that as you age. Those are things you know that I, we, you know, I, you, we need to bring out. We can surface these things and actually work them into the plan. And make sure that you're pre- better prepared to be successful on race day and training. Another key element of master's training that Endurance Nation was built for, quite frankly, is the social aspect of it. Being able to check in the accountability, having someone to talk to about these challenges and be able to process them together. It's really hard to sort of piece these different pieces of the puzzle together, particularly when you've got fatigue, but you don't actually really know what the problem is, what the direct onset is. It can be challenging. But when you're inside a group of people who are also moving along that same time continuum, you get to take advantage of their experience and ask really, you know, frank, uh, direct questions of your teammates to better understand the challenges that they faced in the past. Are they similar to yours? Bring your challenges and get feedback on them and collectively advance that learning of the team in terms of how we manage your specific training for those optimal results. Okay. So <clears throat> to recap you for today's episode, a huge part of what we do is just balance the work and the rest for masters athletes. So you can still be great, but it's that work rest equation that really matters. The second part of what we do is that we make sure that we include that rest uh, strength and mobility. And you get to index on which one is the most important to you for those days, but really making sure that we stay active. We avoid all those really compromising stationary activities, like lots of time at a desk. And we make sure that you're being really dynamic, right? Counting steps, for example, monitoring sleep, making sure you're getting rest, staying hydrated, eating clean. All those elements start to add up and actually become contributing factors to your success. The more you want to be fit, uh, fit and ready to go on race day, the more you have to do outside of your training in order to make those things happen. And as a master's athlete, you have the tools, resources, and thankfully the time to be able to optimize some of these elements. Finally, um, the last piece that we bring to the table here from our lessons learned is the functional testing side. Functional testing has long been a part of Endurance Nation's protocols. Uh, we do it every four weeks, depending on the winter. But as we move into the race season, we do more benchmarking tests. But all these tests are designed to really make sure that we're dialing in the appropriate effort for you. So that as you're getting ready to, to race, as you're getting ready to do your race prep workouts, or if you're in your specificity period and doing sports-specific work, all of those efforts are based off of your most recent numbers. So again, we take ego out of the equation by actually functionally testing you. If you show up to me in January and say, coach, you know, my FTP is 245 watts. It's awesome. But you haven't ridden in six weeks or eight weeks. And that was last year's FTP. And we test you now and you're 210. The FTP is 210. It's not 245. If it's a poor test and a low number, you'll move up quickly. But we avoid the ego problem by using real-time data, by trusting your experience, by giving you social environments where you can talk, connect, and learn, and then giving you those support environments as you move across the process of your season, training alongside your other peers to a variety of different modalities, different races, and a place where you can be successful as it depends on whatever your goals are. So again, you can still be fast, right? You may not be the fastest, say, Ironman you've ever done, but you could probably have the fastest bike, maybe the fastest swim could maybe even be the fastest run. You can get to pick and choose, strategize, and be really crafty about it. You can do that on your century ride. You can do that on your open order swim. You can do that on your uh, ultra run, whatever it may be, whatever your challenge may be. We can be successful in it. We just have to be really judicious with our effort and be really smart. And the good news is inside of Endurance Nation, you're surrounded by smart people who are dedicated to those same tasks. I probably walked some of those steps before and give you an opportunity to follow in their footsteps as you blaze a new path forward for yourself and inspire the rest of us to be successful. If you want to learn more about how we train master's athletes, come check us out at endurancenation.us. You go there forward slash join. You can apply to join the team and join some other master's athletes. Or if you go there as well, you'll see resources and links for um, courses that we have, other free downloads, videos, et cetera, to make you a smarter, better athlete. Inside Endurance Nation, we're committed to making you the best athlete you can be. And we take this long-term holistic approach, which empowers you to make the best possible decisions. And it starts right here. 
by choosing Endurance Nation. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this master series. There'll be more from us, you know, not just from our work in series that we did in January or master series now. Stay tuned for more events and resources coming your way to make you a better athlete. I look forward to talking with you soon. Thanks so much for your time. Have a fantastic week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Endurance Nation. Hey, podcast fans. I know you love the podcast because here you are, you're listening to it and you're still listening to me talk right now. Did you know you can get content just like this in your inbox once a month? We send out a great newsletter. We call it, guess what? The unfair advantage. That's right. It's our information to you, something that separates you from the competition. If they're not here, then they don't know. But if you are here, then now you do. Zero excuses. If you go check us out online at endurancenation.us forward slash newsletter, it's your opportunity to enter your email address, sign up for these updates. They come once a month, sometimes twice a month, depending on my race schedule. And it's your chance to get insider information that's going to help you become a better, smarter athlete. Don't miss out on this chance to get ahead of the competition. It doesn't cost you any money and it's not a ton of work. It's just your email address. That's endurancenation.us forward slash newsletter. For more information about Endurance Nation, visit us online at endurancenation.us. The provided music is from the Podshow Podsafe Music Network. Check it out at music.podshow.com. 